looking backwards in the nullable, all of those algorithms take time proportional to the number of non-terminals. It's very fast. You could write a program to convert things in Chomsky normal form very, very quickly. All right, so anyway, Joe, so going forward from S here, S can't get to anything because there's no non-terminals in this list. Therefore, can't get to A, so we cross out A, and the only thing left is S goes to 0 again. Questions about this? I want to mention one more thing. We're done with Chomsky normal form, and I want to mention one more thing before we quit then. I won't start push down machines today. I'll start them uh, next lecture. Dimitri's going to do some examples of this stuff and of uh, more grammar stuff. Then we'll do the Lex and Yak thing. Then we're ready to move on to machines. But before I quit today, remember I told you there's like only one interesting thing you can decide about context-free languages, and that's the membership question. And we'll talk about that on a separate day, a separate algorithm. But there's one other question that you can answer. Anybody remember what that is? Another question about context-free grammars? Almost every question is undecidable. The one question you can answer is, does a given context for grammar actually generate nothing? That you can answer, yes or no. How do you answer that question, now that we've done Chomsky normal form? Does it only generate nothing, or does it generate nothing? Nothing meaning the empty set, not the empty string. Generates nothing, not one terminal symbol. It would all disappear in Chomsky normal form if it was kept. If you actually did the Chomsky normal form, you would have no grammar left. But you don't even have to do it that much. All you have to concentrate on is this last useless symbol part. All you have to do is check whether the start symbol is useless. And we have a two-stage algorithm that's completely loopy and sim loopy in a good way, and, and simple to do that. You can check whether any non-terminal is a useless symbol. If the start symbol is a useless symbol, it means the start symbol cannot generate any terminal strings. If that's the case, the grammar is empty. Okay, generates an empty language. That you can do. Asking the complement of that question, does the grammar generate everything? That's undecidable. That's much harder. <coughs> Where the size of your input, say, is the number of non-terminals or the number of productions or... So, most of the steps are proportional to the number of non-terminals in your grammar, which is kind of constant relative. I mean, because the productions might be much longer than the. So the number in Chomsky normal form, the number of productions and the number of non-terminals is just related by a constant, right? Because right? you only have two in each one. So there's only one step that takes more than the obvious linear time. You tell me what step can take a lot of time. That e production step. If you have a lot of occurrences, you get that exponential thing. Because but, of the subtlety? No, no, because, because like if, if m appears six times in a production and it can disappear, then there's two to the six different ways it can disappear. That's the only time where you actually do something that tends to explode a little bit. But practically speaking, it, it's completely, it's easy to do. It, it's not a difficult algorithm and it's not an MP-complete problem. Right, right. You said you put it in Chomsky, Chomsky normal form and then check to see if the start state goes, is useless or just... You, you just can just take it, it, it from the beginning and say, is this start thing useful or useless by running this algorithm? You don't have to do anything as far as the other steps go. You just take the useless symbol algorithm and use it separately, and that's good enough. Are computer languages put in this form? Mm, no, I don't think so. If you, my motivations aren't up in the board, but actually if you look at all those motivations, none of them uh, help with compiling. They help with that order n cubed algorithm, which nobody uses. They help with a proof of the pumping lemma, which is an abstraction, but we don't actually have to keep anything in that form. And it helps with a proof that machines are the same as grammars. So it's, it's mostly a mathematical convenience and not a practical convenience. Um, yeah, practically you come up with these things in an LRK grammar called LR items, and you make a big finite state machine out of them, and, you, it, and then you come up with a parser based on that. So actually you don't, you don't do this to do compiling. Other questions? Yeah. Does Go Chomsky ahead. normal form allow the, uh, the ORs, the bars between the different options, or do you have to break that up into uh, separate? They, yeah, I mean, they allow it. It does? Yeah, I mean, that's just the... 
writing convenience more than a more than a rule about how many are in each one. Right. So well, it would mean you would have to rename it. You'd have to do S goes to A B or C D would have to be rewritten. S goes to A B. S goes to C D. Well, yeah. if you don't allow the ors, if you don't allow it to have multiple ones, then you could. No, it's just. Add extra symbols. I want to make sure I understand what you're asking because it's not. I mean, it's just a writing convention to do that, but if you allow multiple multiple productions out of the same S. But Analyzing the paper where there's only one production that has non-terminals, those are very special grammars. Maybe I should just here. I'll just be, before we quit, we'll quit in just one minute. But last thing today before we quit, we talked about these special grammars, these single tree grammars that have that every non-terminal like s would have only one production. It might have a lot of terminals, but only one production with non-terminals special kind of grammar. And we showed that you can get equal zeros and ones. And, so, and I think Neil asked me, is there any set that you can't get with these kind of grammars? So here's a simple set that you can't get. You can't get zero star plus one star with these kind of grammars. It's a, it's a regular set. You can't even get it. So if you try to make a picture, here's finite state machines. Here's context-free languages. And you wanted to get a picture of the single tree languages, they're like, there's something like this. There are some finite state machines that are not in there. There are some context-free languages that are in there. They kind of overlap. So, so the, yeah, I think you asked that question yesterday. Somebody did. I'm not really sure. But anyway, even simple languages like this you can't get because you really need that union. You need two possibilities. You, there's actually there's a proof for it. That's the intercalation lemma. It's like a pumping lemma. You can really prove this can't happen. Anyway, um, that's way off topic right now. Let's quit for the day.